If this happens to be on the appetizer section of a menu of the restaurant I'm eating at, there's at least a 90% chance that I'm going to order it. It's tried and true, it's delicious, and it's simple to make. This is the coconut shrimp recipe everyone should know how to make. While these shrimp are incredibly tasty by themselves, I mean super tasty, I think a little dipping sauce can go a really long way. Here's what it is. It's a tasty, zesty orange sauce, and we're gonna start with one cup of orange marmalade, which is essentially like orange jam with the peel in there. Next, we're gonna add in a third cup of sweet chili sauce, which you can get in the Asian aisle of your grocery store. Next, a third cup of honey, followed up with two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. The zest is starting to come in here and then one teaspoon of Tabasco sauce or any of your favorite hot sauce. We're gonna grab a whisk, mix this together until it is completely combined. It will last several weeks in the refrigerator, so pop it in there until it's ready to be used. You definitely have options when it comes to shrimp. You could do small, teeny little bitty shrimp. You can use medium-sized shrimp or big old gigantic prawns. Here's the size that I recommend using and a few little tricks around peeling them and deveining them should you need it. I believe 16, 20 shrimp are the best. That means 16 to 20 make up one pound. Now, if you bought them unpeeled or undeveined, I recommend buying a peeler and deveiner. Save yourself some heartache. All you do is run it down through the top and then simply pull up, remove the shells, and then boom, great. Now, if you bought them deveined but not peeled, the real easy thing to do here is pinch the legs and pull it around. The shell will come right off. Save those shells for shrimp bisque. If you can get these peeled and deveined, do it. Now, before we get started on everything else, don't forget to do this. Let's start heating up our oil while we prep up everything. So we're gonna add about five cups of oil, any neutral flavored oil will do here. We're gonna turn the heat to medium. We wanna get it until it's about 350 degrees. Don't worry if you don't have a thermometer, I'll show you what to do. Okay, it's time to move on to the next phase and it's called the standard breading procedure. It's incredibly important, super simple to prepare. Here's what it consists of. Flour, egg wash, and then breading. We're gonna start off with one cup of flour. You know I like to use these little pie tins or cake tins. We're gonna season it very well with sea or kosher salt and then ground white pepper to keep the consistency nice and white. We're gonna mix it together using a fork or even a whisk, no problem. And be sure to taste it. Make sure it's seasoned. If you get some nice salt flavors in there, great. If you need more, add it. And now for the egg wash, this is the most important procedure because we wanna make sure that the breading stays on it. We have two large eggs, which we are going to whisk until essentially they are scrambled. We're next gonna pour in one cup of very cold club soda. You could use ice water if that's all you have, no problem. Once it is mixed in there, we have a few more things to add, beginning with a three quarter cup of all purpose flour and three quarters cup of cornstarch. We're gonna season it well with salt and then again with ground white pepper. Mix it until it is combined. This is more of like a tempura style batter. This is gonna make sure again that that coconut breading really sticks on there. You can set it into the refrigerator until we're ready to use. And now for that breading. I have three cups of shredded sweetened coconut. Be sure to use sweetened. Unsweetened is not gonna give you that nice flavor. And to balance it out, I'm gonna use one cup of panko breadcrumbs. Use a fork or even clean hands or gloves, whatever you got, mix it together, break up any of those large coconut chunks, and essentially make sure it's completely combined. Now you can absolutely use all coconut as the breading if you just love coconut flavors, like obviously really love coconut flavors. However, I think the panko helps to coat it more completely and also can assist in making it really golden brown. Now my love for coconut shrimp, believe it or not, I actually worked at the Outback Steakhouse for like one week because it was absolute madness. Like it was crazy. There's stuff flying all over the place, every oven full, every stove top full. I couldn't do it anymore. But I was on the fry station, because that was like where you start off. So I made the bloomin' onion, the loaded up fries, and of course the coconut shrimp, and I eat like eight million of these. They were so delicious. I still love them. Now in no way is this a copycat recipe, because I worked there 25 years ago. I don't even remember what was in it, like, at all. However, it's super good, and that's what I did. All right, enough of that. Time to bread these up. Let's grab one shrimp. We are gonna add it to that first seasoned flour. Just give it a really quick dusting, sprinkle off any excess, 
then go over to our nice egg wash switch hands so one is wet and one is dry dip it on both sides and then the most important part lay it right in there add some of the breading to the top press down flip it again on the other side add some more on each side press it down we need these things to be completely coated repeat the process and then add them to a cookie sheet tray lined with parchment paper if you want, because I know you may ask the question, you can cover them, put them in the freezer, pull them out straight from the freezer into the hot oil whenever you want them, or you can leave them in the refrigerator covered for a few hours if you aren't gonna make these right now. For me, they're winking at me, I'm starving. Let's fry them up. To make sure our oil is at temperature, especially if you don't have a thermometer, sprinkle a little bit of flour in there. If it fries but doesn't burn, then we are good to go. I'm gonna add a few shrimp at a time here and cook it off in batches. Obviously, I don't have a huge deep fryer when I can fry up like 30 of these. I wave it back and forth and then I put it in there. This is just to make sure nothing sticks. It only is gonna take in between two and four minutes to cook, but I come back after a minute or so, move some things around, make sure nothing's sticking and nothing is. After that time, they should be nice and brown, just like this, and cooked throughout. Obviously, the most important piece. Lay them to the side on a sheet tray lined with paper towels to drain off any excess oil and repeat the process until all the shrimp is fried. The fundamental cooking techniques are so important. It's standard breading procedure, making sure your oil is at the right temperature, that sauce. Ooh, man, is that good. Be sure to do all of these things because it will absolutely elevate your everyday cooking. Here's how simple they are to plate up. We're just gonna serve this up on a plate. Totally cool to layer on there. They're nice and dried. Don't forget to hit it with that sauce. And if you want, garnish with a little fresh chopped parsley, cilantro, or chives. These are crazy flavorful and jam-packed with that coconut breading. So dang delicious. And I'm telling you, if you think these look good, you absolutely have to try out one of my most popular recipes for shrimp scampi. It's incredible. We'll see you there.